Okay, you ready, Lauren? This is from the subreddit around work. Title, how to give notice after six months. Oof, recruitment and retention having a problem there. <laughs> this is the shady coach part. Like, oh, y'all got problems. <laughs> so um, I'm leaving my job after only six months. It's a corporate position and I'm leaving for more money and a work at home position. I'm leaving at a time that is very inconvenient because others have been leaving as well. I feel kind of guilty leaving after only six months. What is the best approach to telling them? What reason should I give? It's honestly just wasn't a good fit. I mean, I don't know where the question is, but whatever guilt you got, ain't no company feeling any guilt about letting you go. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's just slice and dice this one up. Uh, first of all, if you're leaving after six months and others are leaving at six months or whatever length and tenure they're at, you are probably experiencing a very psychologically unsafe and dare I say it, a toxic environment. So there will never be a good time because there's probably a huge line out the door and HR is like, why am I still here? When do I get to leave this nonsense? Uh, we have seen this in our past lives and with some of our clients. Um, I think first you need to look at the loyalty factor. Like who is more loyal to who in this situation? If you are more loyal to your company, you have given away your power. You have just indicated there is more money and a more flexible work from home situation. And that is your reason because that is the truth. Now, if there are other factors for you leaving about culture, about a bad manager, feel free to craft a message around that. But I think just focusing on those two elements, they can't compete with it. And they need to know that their talent is going to go to a better paying, more flexible position. You have anything else to add on that? <laughs> well, yes, I do. And so <laughs> I would say, you know, if I was coaching the person, I would say, resolve yourself with the guilt. Mm -hmm. If you want to set them up for somebody to take over, and this is something you are doing out of the kindness of your heart, if you got any standard operating procedures, update them. So it makes it easier for them to train the next person coming in. Secondly, it's okay for you to make choices that are better for you, your lifestyle, your family, and for financial positioning. You should also be prepared that they might not give you the full two weeks notice. And do you have enough of a sleep well at night fund to take care of any household expenses if you were to be without a paycheck for two weeks? And to make the bridge between earning your first paycheck at the new job and receiving your first paycheck at the new job. Because potentially you could be without money depending on if you get paid bi-monthly or um, once a month at, without, without a paycheck for about six weeks. And so I would say, take care of the financial stuff at home, um, but then offer up, you know, the, hey, I've updated these things. These checklists are, up, are done. These are the systems that I use and give them a smooth transition plan if you do stay the two weeks. And that's one of the ways that you could help with your own moral dilemma that you may be having around the resignation. But girl, resign. Girl, resign. resign. Resign, resign. I, I so resonate with this question, except instead of six months, it was seven years. <laughs> and I felt so guilty about leaving my team. Like what happens if I'm not there to protect them? What happens if I'm not there to take care of them? And it's just like martyrdom that happens. And the reality is once I looked at it is what are you preventing the team from seeing or experiencing for them to make a different decision for themselves? by you protecting and shielding them. Yeah. And, and by the way, I've coached, you know, friends, close friends through this recently. Um, and I said to them, when two people have resigned in 30 days on their current team, I said, you're going to be the only person left. And yep. my, it was them. And one of, he goes, no, my boss will be there. Boss resigned. Right. Yeah. You don't want to be the last one holding all the weight because guess where all the work's going. Yeah. And they're not hiring fast enough because guess what? People are reading Glassdoor. And when people leave and they're unhappy, they have no problem posting all their foolishness online. Yeah. And well, naming names. But I would also say that some companies may not be as current as they need to be in what the workforce supply and demand dynamics actually look like. And, you know, finding that qualified worker 
it's not may not be as easy as they think it's going to be, depending on where we are in in the um, people operations model. And so this is one of the reasons why you need to build a better culture. You need to build a better culture. Plain and simple. Yeah. And, and if you're not, if you're not asking the necessary conversations when someone is resigning, don't just accept their resignation letter. Ask curious questions even if you don't want to hear the truth, because at that point you need to be collecting data and you need to be building the business case for whoever needs to hear it. Even if they're not ready to hear it, you as the person receiving that information have an opportunity to start building trends. Why are people leaving? Because what ends up happening is it becomes an anecdote about the individual being the problem versus it being about what it actually is. Compensation, flexibility, culture, workload change, mm-hmm. bad managers, toxicity, right? Yeah. And so what does that really look like? Um, and so those are the things I would say uh, for sure. Um, th- this one was a good question. Uh, don't forget, if you are interested in us helping you with your workforce dilemma, feel free to reach out to us and we would love to, to feature you in one of our snippets of conversation around giving advice from Lauren and Ebony, Ebony and Lauren, the workforce whisperers, whatever that is.